Hey, how you doing? It's Randy. After my bug out bag video, we're going to request to do a little more in depth on my belt and vest setup, so that's what we're going to get into right now. This here is the SO Tech sniper harness. It's got padded shoulder straps, Molly set up on the back and sides. It doesn't go around to the front half of you. It actually just connects through using nylon webbing and clip buckles. Molly actually goes down partially into the suspenders if you had something you wanted to clip on right next to you. Some people like carrying knives there. If you're wearing a pack though, it's not really conducive for wearing knives on there. It's got quick disconnect on both suspender pieces, whether for medical emergency or you fell in a hole, you fell in water, and you can't get out with the setup on. Here inside the back, there's a pocket here so you can put in a water bladder or longer items that you need to conceal, whether it's like documents, maps, or something like that. Inside the back of the vest, there's another small little pocket here. It sits across your, uh, your lower back to mid back. You can put in a map protractor or folded up map. On this side of my vest here, I have this is on the right side. This is a 308 double mag pouch from Cheaper Than Dirt. It's rated it's supposed to be for 308 mags, but actually fits larger ones than just a 308 mag. This is a Remington 700 long action mag from Badger Ordnance. This fits 300 wind mag rounds, so look, quite a bit bigger than a 308. Also carry a Garmin. Uh, this is the 130 GPS radio com combination. Another side over here this is a tactical tailor pouch designed for knives and multi tools. And there I carry the Leatherman Surge. It's a heavy duty, robust model that they make. It doesn't have as many options as other models, such as the Wave. On the insides here, there's a lot less options here. But it's made a lot more heavy duty than the Wave is. I carry a Wave as well. I like that tool. I've been using the Wave since 2003, actually. I got this well as an Iraq just to have a more uh, robust tool. The vest is actually attached onto the belt at four points here. These are S, or correction, HSGI suspender attachment points. I remove the top of the suspenders and just use the attachment points to connect on down here at these loops. This is a Viking Tactics battle belt. It has four attachment points. Each one is stitched into the belt with a plastic connector piece. On the belt, like I covered in my other video, I carry my pistol. This is a Fireland ALS holster with a Blackhawk attachment cog. Springfield XD compact mag. Compact holds 10 rounds of 45 stone. On the pistol itself, it has a load indicator here. Once it's been racked at least once, it has a charge indicator. The firing pin pokes out the back. It has a grip safety similar to that of the 1911s. It has the trigger safety, same as the Glock. It's got an ambidextrous magazine release. The other nice feature on this, this comes apart a lot easier than uh, someone's Glock. You lock it to the rear, you flip the switch, release the slide, pull the trigger, and you're taken apart. A lot faster to field strip than a Glock, or many of the other pistols out in the field. Lock it to the rear again, flip the switch down, and it's reattached. On the bottom here, this is a Surefire X300 LED weapon light. Uses two of the 123 batteries. It's got over 100 lumens just out of this small light here. On the top for sights, I have excess sights, the big dot front, large white ring with the tritium in the middle, and a small tritium uh, notch underneath. You line up the notch below the dot. The holster attaches onto the belt here using this female cog part, which is attached to a belt clip, also from Blackhawk. This is attached directly on the belt. The way the Viking Tactics belt is set up is the Molly sections are separated, so that way you can feed your pistol belt, which I use a tactile tailor pistol belt. It's fed through after this piece of Molly, before this piece of Molly, and actually pulls through, and you can connect onto the belt directly. This piece here and this piece here are nylon webbings from Blackhawk with the side clips. And then these are the top mount brackets for a super holster. 
I don't generally carry the Serpa holster except for when I go to the range, so that's why I'm not going to cover that right now. But I have those attachment points for when I want to attach onto it. Next is my tracker and Hedgehog Leatherworks tracker holster. The Tom Brown tracker will T1. Very, very nice knife. I like this knife a lot. I've used this for many different tasks. I took it actually to uh, the Ancient Pathways Complete Survivor and Bushcraft courses. Used it for all 10 days of the combined courses. You got a smaller draw blade here. You got a larger chopping blade. You can actually use this as a small hatchet if you don't have an axe with you. It's got a small saw back. It's really not proficient for actually sawing through material, but it's nice for notching fire boards if you're going to set up uh, for primitive fire making. On the back here I have additional paracord tied on. There's a lanyard hole. I don't really like the lanyard because of the dinner down here in the Sonoran Desert. If stuff gets stuck in the lanyard holding here when you're out in the bush, most of the time it's got thorns on it so you're going to wind up getting stuck with that again. Uh, there's not many plants down here in the Sonoran Desert without thorns. Even our trees have thorns. This is a hedgehog sheath. I have the T1 with upgraded pouch. It's got the quick disconnect straps, which you can use to feed through Molly, which is what I did, or you can actually put it directly onto a belt. This is the pocket that comes on there. It's got two retention points, clips onto this metal piece, and then it's also fed through this leather belt loop. On the inside, it's got a nylon webbing pull cord, which can eject what you have in your pouch. Right now I have jute twine in there, a nice tinder. On the side here I have the Hedgehog Leatherworks ferro rod. It's a nice heavy duty ferro rod. It lasts a lot longer. It's thicker than the majority of the other rods on the market. And as it thins out it's not going to fit as well in this pouch. So they have a, uh, a bungee core here which hooks around the bottom of the core of the ferro rod once it's inserted in the, the pocket for it. So now the rod won't just come out even once it gets thinner. Next, this is a HSGI double mag pouch. Side release buckles. It actually comes with Velcro set up. I removed the Velcro from the face here and then just connected it onto the opposite side. This way it makes a little bit less noise. In my mag pouch I carry two of the full size Springfield XD magazines. Black bottom one, my first three rounds are snake shot for when I'm out camping or hiking in case there's some kind of situation where I can't get away from the snakes. Next in the tan bottom, it's just regular 45 ACP. The pouch here is actually mounted on a tactical tailor vertical horizontal adapter kit. It's a molly setup. This side has molly running up and down this way. The back side has molly running this way. I attached it onto the belt using Maxpedition tack ties. This way, if I lean over side to side, I don't get stuck by the ends of the normal plastic clips that are used on most of the tactical tailor and the HSGI items. Next is my basic emergency kit and survival kit. This is what I take with me every day when I go out, out, into the, out in the field of any kind, whether I'm camping or hiking or whatever. I bring electrolyte supplement items. I have a Cliff protein bar and a Cliff electrolyte shoes. Carry an army field dressing. This is the old school first aid item that was basic and all for each individual soldier. Carry a signal mirror. This is a small signal mirror called the Star Flash Ultra for ultimate survival. Carry a small paracord bracelet. There's about five feet of paracord alone right here. In the main compartment, I have a tube with cotton balls that are coated in Vaseline. And then at the top of the container, I also have a wet fire tinder from Ultimate Survival. I have a Mylar blanket for emergency shelter, emergency covering. I have an infrared strobe, small little plastic block with the chip inside connects directly on top of your 9 volt battery and sends out a strobe visible for MVGs. So, and MVGs is a night vision goggles. So at night, if you wind up lost out there and search and rescue is for you, looking for you, you can put that on at night, because 
because they may not be out on foot looking for you, but they might still be using MVGs and binoculars to glass at night to see if you're still signaling or if you have a fire. I also carry a magnesium uh, block with a steel match on the side. It's another ferro rod. There's a small little backup blade on here. This isn't really usable for any real bushcraft, unless that's the only thing you had, really. But I can use it to scrape off the magnesium and use this uh, use the fire steel here so I don't have to use my primary blade. I also have an Exotac match case. Right now I have 10 REI matches in here. You can actually fit 12, but I, I gave up two of them so that I could fit in the strikers. These are the strikers that come in the REI match boxes. They're a lot bigger than what comes on the case here. On the case here, this tiny little strip here is the phosphorus strike surface, which what's nice too is, is that's protected when you seal this on, the seal's on over an O-ring. But I don't want to use this up, but this one is, I keep this for like an emergency purpose. If I lose these, then I still have that. On the bottom of the, the case here, there's also a really coarse sandpaper that you can use for strike anywhere matches. We'll go on the inside of the, the Viking Tactics belt. On the inside here, they have full lining of that new 3D mesh thing that's being used in a lot of equipment now for padding. It's pretty nice. It rides pretty nice on your hips and your lower back. It's got elastic points if you wanted to attach it onto another inner belt or some kind of attachment for your for your pants. This is a tactical tailor pistol belt. It wraps around so the inside of the pad, clips together here. It's got a slide adjustment. Right now I have it tucked inside here to keep it from coming loose. It feeds through another belt loop set just to hold, help retain it inside of the mesh here. If you have any further questions on what we talked about today and what I showed you, you can email me at quinnm107 at yahoo.com. You guys have fun out there and stay safe.